I'm Ms. Wheeler, and welcome to my thumbs up, thumbs down review of The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hira Arakawa. So before I start, just to give a little bit of background, The Traveling Cat Chronicles is a book that tells the story of Nana, a stray cat who gets injured and taken in by a cat lover named Satoru. Satoru spoils Nana, and Nana learns how to live life as a pet. For the first few years they're together, do have a super good time, but then one day, unforeseen circumstances put Satoru in a position where he has to give up Nana. Hoping to give Nana the best home, the two go on an adventure across Japan, visiting Satoru's old friends, looking for a place for Nana to call his new home. But nowhere seems to work. On their journey, they witness spectacular views, interact with great people, learn new things, and leave places better than they found them. I just want to start off by saying that this book was definitely an overall thumbs up for me. The way the characters were created, each of their own unique, distinguishable qualities, helped me connect with them and see them almost as real people. Satoru's tragic past, but very genuine personality, Nana's sassy street cat attitude, and the personalities and problems of everyone they meet on the way makes the book seem more real and accurate to what a story like this might be like in Japan. Another cool element of the book is the jumping back and forth that the author uses between characters and time frames. The usual train of progression included a visit to a friend, they talk for a bit, catch up, but then there's a change to narration of a past event with that said friend. And then that happens, and then there's a change back to the present. And then often what happens is that they'll reference the past and either resolve an issue that happened during that narration or help that friend overcome something. Jumping back from past to present and Satoru to Nana creates an intriguing story that kept me engaged and interested in the past between each friend. And the way that Nana and Satoru also resolve issues or help their old friends makes the progression that much better. Unfortunately, as the story goes on, Satoru just can't find a home that he sees fit for Nana. And at this point in the story, it is revealed that Satoru has cancer and can't be living on his own any longer. So he moves in with his aunt who took him in many years ago when his parents died in a car accident when he was a child. As he gets more and more sick, Satoru was at the hospital more and more until he had to stay there for treatment. Nana was broken at this, so he ran away and became a stray once again. As a stray, however, he was able to learn the hospital's roots in the map and find his way back to Satoru, where they reunited just in time as he passed away. Obviously, this is a very sad ending to the book, but I think it shows readers that no matter what happens in the future, we need to always look at life positively, just like Satoru did, and just how he impacted so many people in different ways and helped them overcome challenges whenever he visited them. And also to take advantage of moments when they present themselves and most importantly, not let our past define who we're going to become in the future. Bye, Ms. Wheeler. Thank you.